Hi, I'm Jervis Lewis, and in this video I'm going to show you how to load iOS storyboards depending on the screen height. And that's uh, caused a bit of problems. I've written an article a couple of years ago and it's time for an update. I thought this is a perfect opportunity. Right now I'm recording this screencast in May 2015. We have about five screen sizes to deal with and that's just ludicrous to pin all that on one single storyboard. And the sizes that we're dealing with are uh, all iPads have a screen height of 1024, so 1024 pixels, even though the pixel density is a bit higher, these 1024 points are kind of, you know, regular pixels if you want to think about it that way. So this is what the what this value that we're going to query is going to return. Then we have our old friend, the iPhone 4S, still around, still capable of running iOS 8, and that has 480 pixels of screen height. Uh, that's also true for the iPhone 3GS, which is also still around, and the iPod Touch 4th generation. And then we have the iPhone 5, 5S, and 5C, and they're all, uh, including the iPod Touch 5th generation, they all have 568 pixels of screen height. But we also have these two brand new contenders, which of course are completely different than what we've been dealing with in the past, and that's the iPhone 6 with 667 pixels of screen height, just one away from the number of the beast, my friends. And there's the iPhone 6 Plus, which has 736 pixels of screen height. So it's difficult to put all that in a single storyboard. Uh, larger screens, you may want to have additional buttons, and smaller screens, you may want to uh, just rejig the interface a little bit. I'm going to show you how to do that and how to load a different, entirely different storyboard depending on that screen height. We're going to do all that with Xcode 6.3, the latest and greatest release of Xcode. <coughs> anyway, there's also iOS 8.3, and um, because I haven't got 57,000 devices here, I'm going to use the iPhone simulator to demonstrate the effects. Righty then, let's get on with it. I'm going to start with a brand new Xcode project here. Single view application will suffice. I'm going to call it screen size. I'll use a universal project and I'm going to do this in Objective C. I'll put that up on my desktop. Now to test the screen height, let me head over to the app delegate implementation file and collapse all these methods here. And in the very first one here, application did finish launching with options. That's the one I'm going to open up again and uh, and give myself a little bit of space here. And let me first of all show you how to test the screen height. So we can do that with the UI screen property. It'll return an int. Let's call it screen height. And it will come out of UI screen main screen. And that will return several things. One of them is bounce. Bounce has a size and size has a height. So this will return an integer, no matter how you hold the iPhone, by the way, or any iOS device, it will always return the larger portion of the screen as the height. Um, that's, you know, it's good to know. So in case somebody holds a landscape and you're querying the height, it will always return the larger portion of the screen. As far as I can tell, I mean, you know, you know how volatile iOS is. This could change at a drop of a hat. So, but uh, let's keep it simple and think positive here and it will always return the longer portion of the screen hopefully. Um, so we'll, let's print this out as an NS log here. Screen height. There we go. So depending on which simulator we use, we should now get the screen height returned as an NS log message. Let's try it out, maybe with the iPhone 5S. And there we go. This is it, uh, 568 is the height of an iPhone 5S. Uh, just to prove a point, let's try this again with an iPhone 4S. Thinks about it for a second, and there it is, 480. That's perfect. So the numbers that I've put up, I've tested these before, so we can, we can assume uh, they are correct, but please uh, conduct your own tests to be absolutely sure. Let's head over to the storyboard here. And the storyboard in iOS 8 and Xcode 6, they just look like this, so square, and they don't, um, uh, they don't have the proportions anymore as they, as they once had. Let me drag in a label. We're not going to hook it up, but it'll give us a little indication of what this is called. It may not 
come out centered if I put it here. So let me just uh, let me just put that somewhere here. It doesn't really matter. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna just call it original, and it will become clear in a moment. And maybe give it a heavy look here. Very nice. There. So um, this will just show original now, uh, but we only have one storyboard. So what we need to do is we need to duplicate this storyboard outside of Xcode and then import all our copies again into Xcode and then we can amend each um, storyboard. So in reality what you probably want to do is finish one storyboard if you have a lot of UI going in here. Uh, finish that first, something that will be the same on smaller screens as well as larger screens. And when you're ready to add additional UI elements for the larger screens, then you go ahead and do what I'm about to do. Or alternatively, if you have designed everything for the larger screen and now you're gonna design the smaller screens, uh, copy it now and then remove things for the smaller screens. So right click on that storyboard and say show in Finder. And that'll bring up the uh, location of that storyboard. We have two, one is for the launch screen in iOS 8 and the other one is just our storyboard here, the main storyboard. Hold the uh, Alt or Option key and drag from the main storyboard down to create a duplicate. There we go, now we have main two storyboard. And since we have so many screen sizes, let's uh, create a few more copies. I'm gonna create four copies in total, so I'm gonna leave my original untouched and then I'm just gonna start renaming these things. So one will be for the, uh, let's just, I'll, I'll just call them all main, so main 4S will be for the iPhone 4S. Main 5S for the iPhone 5S. And then we have main 6 for the iPhone 6. And the fourth one is going to be main 6 Plus for the iPhone 6 Plus. So we have our original, which is untouched right now, and that is a good candidate for the iPad, for example. If you're doing a universal app, then main, or the, this one could be for the iPad, and the other four for the incriminating screen sizes. So let's go back and uh, head over to Xcode. Xcode doesn't know that we've duplicated these files outside. So right-click anywhere here on this sidebar, and select add files to your project name. And that'll bring up this window here. And it depends where you've put your project. So mine is on the desktop, it's called screen size. And in screen size, there's base.lproj, super scary secret folder here. And that will show us the items that are well in there. So launch screen and main are already part of my project. The four that are not, uh, just multiple select them, hold shift to select multiple items and hit add. So now all our storyboards look exactly the same and so that we can distinguish them as soon as they pop up on the screen, let me just put up a message here. So on the iPhone 4S, I'll change that label to iPhone 4S. Likewise here with the iPhone 5S, 5S, there we go, 6 plus. and the iPhone 6. And our original is still called original. Okay, now how do we load these depending on what simulator or what device we're using? Well, let's head back to our app delegates implementation file. We can do that entirely here. And I will create a new method that will test the screen size and load the appropriate storyboard. So. Uh, it's a method that will return a storyboard and we'll just call it grab storyboard. It will of course return a storyboard at a later date. Let me just put nil here so that uh, we suppress that error message and comment my code a little bit. So first we're gonna determine the screen height. And we'll do that exactly like we did up here. So it's an int that this method is going to return UI screen, main screen, bounce, size, height. 
We're also going to define a storyboard. I'll just call it storyboard and do nothing with it, so just that I have something that I can populate in a moment. Now all these screen sizes, because we have so many, and if then statement would be a little bit cumbersome, so perhaps we'll use a switch statement instead. So we're going to switch, we can only switch on integer, so uh, lucky for us we have one to switch on, which will be the screen height. Let me add a comment here as well. So we'll, maybe we'll go from, uh, from small to large. So we'll have, say uh, this one will test the iPhone 4S. So in case this is 480 pixels tall, we're going to say the storyboard that we need will have to be called main 4S storyboard. And we do that with the UI storyboard method, storyboard with name. Okay, and all that needs to be the first part, so we don't need the dot storyboard. All we need is main hyphen 4s or whatever you call your storyboard. So main hyphen 4s, that's enough to specify the file name. And the bundle, in this case, we can say nil. Uh, nil means it's the current bundle that everything else lives in. And also very important, the break statement. We must remember that so that the switch statement stops here and heads over to the very bottom line. Okay, let's repeat this step a few more times. So let's go with the iPhone 5S next and we'll say case 568 and we'll do exactly the same. So storyboard, storyboard with name and now we're going to call it main 5S and the bundle is nil again. Add a little break statement. iPhone 6 case 667. I believe that's what I called it, main 6 indeed. Always good to check. If you make a mistake here with the file names or with the break statements, you may run into, well, unexpected um, situations. If by the end of this switch statement or if statement or whatever, you don't have a valid storyboard, your app will, what did they say at Apple, result in an exception or something like that. So basically it will crash. One more, iPhone 6 Plus. And it's always the same, really, what I'm doing here. So storyboard with name, main 6 plus, bundle, nothing, break. And then we have one final statement here, which is the default. And uh, the default is what happens if neither of these cases are true. So uh, we would say default, perhaps, it's an iPad. And in that case, we also need to provide a storyboard and that's the storyboard that we have perhaps originally or you can have an iPad storyboard so um, mine is just called main here and it's loaded with the exact same thing again bundle nil great and that concludes the break statement all that remains now is that we need to return our storyboard which will now definitely have a value even if Apple will change the screen sizes at one point Oh, sorry, I've made a little mistake here. I didn't put a case here. Uh, I, Xcode was kind enough to tell me, hey, uh, we don't have a case. The code will never be executed. All right, all right. Okay, let's put case 736. <sighs> Xcode is happy. This always makes me so, so glad if Xcode is happy. Never mind me or my health or my eyesight. Hopefully Xcode is happy. Anyway, so this was, this was the storyboard method. Um, and uh, up here, back in application, did finish launching with options. I'm going to uh, just comment this code out. And I'm going to execute it now and uh, say, grab create storyboard depending on screen height. So we'll do that with UI storyboard, storyboard. Uh, call our own method self, whoops grab storyboard. 
this will give us a storyboard, but Xcode isn't going to display that yet. So to do that, we will tell our window that the root view controller will come from that storyboard and we will execute a method on our storyboard to instantiate the initial view controller. This will load the initial view controller from this storyboard and pass it to our Windows root view controller. And one last thing that we need to do is we need to make this visible. We need to display that. Because usually this happens in the background when you load storyboards. This is why there was nothing in this method when we started. So Xcode kind of does this under the hood. And now we need to take control of that ourselves. And to do that, we're going to execute a method on our window self window make key and visible and that should be that let's see if i'm right which usually i'm not so <laughs> right now let's uh, run this on our iphone 4s so if everything goes well first of all the app shouldn't crash number one number two we should see iphone 4s so this is our iphone 4s storyboard that's good news let's see what else happens if we go with the iPhone 5s? Let's load that. iPhone 5s, hey, I like it. Good so far. Let's try the iPhone 6. Getting bigger every time. iPhone 6, perfect. Let's try the iPhone 6 Plus. So big it doesn't even fit on the screen anymore. There it is, iPhone 6 Plus. And uh, just to make sure that we've got the iPad covered as well, let me try iPad 2 here and run that. Tiny in comparison to the iPhone 6 Plus. That still has our original. So that is how you do that. If you get an error here, and uh, there is at the end of this method here that grabs the storyboard. If by the end you're returning a property that is nil, so in other words, this switch statement was unsuccessful loading a storyboard, you will get a black screen with an error message that says something like your application is expected to have a root view controller visible or something along those lines. And that usually means that you um, by the end of this you don't have a storyboard and therefore up here when you call that method this can't be executed or in fact this can't be executed the way to test this is you can set breakpoints so the first breakpoint I would probably set if there is a problem is right here in the gutter just before it says return storyboard and just click in the gutter and that's your breakpoint and if you then run your app then Xcode will stop at this point and will give you all kinds of um, kinds of interesting properties to explore. So in our case, you can uh, you can see that my storyboard here is actually defined. If this property would say nil, then that means you haven't got one loaded. And here it shows you the file name and so forth. If that's the case, if that is in fact nil, then you can go and uh, see where that mistake happened. So you can move this breakpoint slightly further up and see where the problem occurred for a bit of troubleshooting advice there. Oh yeah, one last thing, I'm going to upload this to GitHub as well. If you want to have a look at this, you can just load it in and play with it. Um, uncomment these lines to, uh, to see what your screen height is returned on, uh, on actual devices as well. That was it. I hope this was helpful. If you like this video, please consider subscribing to my channel and don't forget to share this video with friends, family and total strangers. Bye for now. I'll see you next time.